I'd like to make the point that I think a lot of us in nephrology today, we tend to think that the patient is anemic when the hemoglobin level is below a point where we can treat with EPO drugs, but that's not really anemia. Anemia is when the hemoglobin goes below, say, 11 or 12, and there are things that we need to do in terms of evaluation at that point. I don't feel at the time of this taping that I really understand why anemia is worse in patients with diabetes. We can certainly think of reasons why that might be the case, but, but it is, it is. The stabilized HIF-alpha subunit translocates into the nucleus to heterodimerize with HIF-beta subunits, activating the hypoxia response genes which stimulate a host of proteins which impact erythropoiesis, iron availability, angiogenesis, as well as energy utilization. And obviously, as kidney disease progresses, since that's the major source of erythropoietin, uh, there is a relative uh, decrement decrease in the EPO production. It's not eliminated. Uh, in fact, the measurable levels of, of erythropoietin are comparable to what would be expected uh, in a normal individual, albeit not at that degree of anemia. If a normal individual had that degree of anemia, uh, the measurable erythropoietin levels would be significantly elevated because of increased production by the kidney. And I know a question that probably both of us have received thousands of times over the years speaking about iron is, why do so many of these patients have high ferritin storage iron values at a time that the transferrin uh, saturation or the serum iron is relatively low? And it appears that hepcidin is the reason, iron being locked away in storage tissue and uh, less iron available in the circulation, and to your point, to marrow to be able to produce new red blood cells. So they're a fascinating protein. These uh, newer agents, first of all, are impacting on an enzyme uh, that can be done with simple organic molecules, which allows for oral dosing rather than the parenteral dosing of recombinant human erythropoietin. Um, the uh, frequency uh, of dosing uh, may be very different than what we currently have with recombinant product. What we're dealing with with these uh, compounds uh, is actually um, creating a more physiologic approach to the pathophysiology of erythropoiesis in chronic kidney disease. Whereas the group that was treated with Roxaducestat shows us a nice increase in hemoglobin by week four to approximately 10 grams. And at the end of study here, Roxaducestat treated patients with chronic kidney disease, not on dialysis, had hemoglobin concentrations of 11. But perhaps as part of the overall treatment of anemia, uh, with the use of these agents, with the HIF stabilizers, there may be this potential to get the additional benefit of liberalizing or freeing up of some of the body's iron stores, which tend to be somewhat restricted in patients who have kidney disease.